Well, welcome in to another edition of The Big Picture. I am your host, Larry Raglan. I tell you what, we are looking at the big picture because we got to get our eyes open, y'all, because we ain't woke, but we certainly awake, man. We, 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 there's so much stuff going on in this world and, and all around this country. And it just seems, sometimes it just seems like there's more than one country out here. You know, I'm in Alabama, but we got, we got some men of God all the way out there in California. And some of y'all think that God ain't doing nothing in California, but I'm going to tell you something right now. You're about to hear from the bishop today that God, is doing something big in California. Bishop Brian Bolt is about to come on here from City Reach, and he's about to tell us what God is doing out on the West Coast. Here we go. Let's do this thing. I tell you right now, they ain't no they when God is moving, man, I'm telling you, when the remnant is rising, he don't just rise in one part, he rises all across the body. And we are blessed today. We got a man that's about to come in the studio with us right now on the big picture that is a true man of God. Uh, we are connected on several levels, and he knows I'm representing up here with the hat. We'll talk about that in just a minute. But he is a great man of God. He pastors out in California in the Los Angeles area. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Pastor Brian Bolt. Pastor, come on in. Bishop, it's great to be here. Man, what an honor it is to have you. I've been wanting to get you on the show for a while. You know, we we met up at the great uh, – in Columbus, Ohio, at the great Dominion Camp meeting and our connections with the doctor, the general himself, Dr. Rod Parsley. He's uh, both of our covering. He is your pastor, and and I'm just so honored just to go straight in. You know, what I am talking about right here on the hat, this is the logo of City Harvest Network, and what a tremendous, tremendous network that is touching the world. And you are one of the leaders of City Harvest Network there uh, with Pastor Parsley. And, uh, and, you know, I heard him tell the story when we were up there about how uh, your your network that you had uh, was just being used by God all over the world and growing uh, there in our country and in other countries. And then you joined forces uh, with Dr. Parsley. So uh, I'm just telling you, uh, Pastor, tell, tell us a little bit about as we start today about City Harvest Network. And maybe there's some pastors that's watching right now that might be interested in connecting with with a with a big with their vision but with a bigger vision that could enable them to see what God is doing in this last day. Well, Bishop, as you know, Pastor Parsley is 100% Pentecostal in City Harvest Network. What I love about it, it is a pe Pentecostal network of Come on. pastors yes. and churches that believe in the in the Holy Ghost, believe in that believe in the Great Commission, reaching souls, and I'm honored to be a part of it and play a small part and uh it is amazing to see how God is using There's churches all over the world from El Salvador to Pakistan, to Honduras, mm. to Africa. And it is, it is incredible to watch the move of God happen through city harvest network and, and the explosion of just so many new churches, so many new uh, converts uh, to Christianity. It is, and, and, it, and it's not just in easy places. City harvest network is planting churches and starting works in places that most people wouldn't even go. Come on. But that is the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yes. And it's unbelievable to see if you are Pentecostal and like so many of us, you know, there are so many denominations that are dying on the vine. Right. But you can be connected to something that is life giving, mm. that's covering, that is pouring into you, investing in you. And you're part of a great legacy from Smith Wigglesworth, Howard Carter, Lester Summerall. And that that's really changed my life. Think about that's it. Great for me and my wife. Hmm. And I, there was an impartation and that legacy. I mean, our church knows about Lester Summer. Our church yes. knows about Wigglesworth. Our church. I mean, we we believe there is an impartation connected to Pastor Parsley and the legacy that we're connected to. And I'm honored to be a part of it. Yes, and and speaking of your church, you know, City Reach Church, tell us a little bit about the church and how it came to be and where it's located and stuff like that. Yeah, it, we're in Los Angeles County. We're probably about 25 minutes from downtown Los Angeles. Wow. And, you know, like we talked about, a lot of people have written off Los Angeles and written off California. And 
I just got to tell people, you know, I, I'm on a divine assignment here and mm. I'm telling you, there is a remnant rising and I'm telling you, there is a hunger in the young people all through mm. California for the real deal. They're not playing church. They want, they want a move of the Holy ghost. Yes. And, and, it, and it's awesome because there is, there is so much, uh, a desire to seek after God, even during the pandemic, there were so many people that, uh, you know, a lot of churches shut down. A yep. lot of people, you know, we were told we couldn't even worship by our governor, wow. but you know, nobody's going to, I'm not stopping worship. Hey, God. come on, come on, Bishop. <laughs> come on, Bishop. Yeah. yeah, I don't care what a governor says. I, 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 I higher authority. My so, God. so I'm telling you, there, there is a remnant. We, we, we started this church five years ago and, and it's just, it's been amazing exploding with miracle signs and wonder our wow. church now. When God called me here, he told me that I'll reach the world from this place. And mm. it's been amazing to see all the different crusades we've done and things we've done around the world. And especially in Central and South America, it's been it's been amazing. And uh, God is definitely raising up a remnant. I'm telling you, I'm believing that there's going to be an Azusa Street yes. revival here in California. It's going to sweep across the, the nation. And mm. I'm believing. Yes, sir. And you talked about that that lineage, that legacy uh, lineage of, of Dr. Parsley and City Harvest Network and all those that are connected with it. And, you know, one day I was just sort of going back and looking over some old Dominion uh, camp meeting tapes that had just changed my life so much in the early 90s when, when my bishop, uh, Clint Brown, was there on the keyboard. And, uh, you know, and it was, you know, that one service, I w- I've watched it so many times when Dr. Les Summerall passed the mantle and gave him the sword and uh, and I just froze it. And when I froze it, I realized, you know, cause you know, Bishop Clint is, is a spiritual father in my life. And now Dr. Parsley is covering me as well through city harvest network. And which is just a dream to me, just never thought that would ever happen. I'm just still just can't believe that these people are in my life like that because of how much they had meant to me. But I froze that picture just perfectly. And I'll send you a copy of it. Cause I've, I froze it. And I sent it to uh, Dr. Parsley. I sent it to Bishop Clint. And in that picture, uh, Dr. Summerall is standing there right in front of uh, Pastor Rod and pa- uh, Pastor Joni, has the sword in his hand, and then right over his shoulder is Bishop Clint sitting on the keyboard. Wow. And and I just I just realized it hit me, oh, my Lord, I, I'm in that lineage now. I'm, I, God has blessed me to be in that lineage. And then I thought about Smith Wigglesworth and all those that came before him. And, and that's the power of connection. That's the power of connection. Of, of being in a covering and and being uh, connected to, and I love what Dr. Parson always says, you know, no anointing ever dies uh, uh, with the person. It's the mantle never dies. It, it's just, it just finds someone else to get on. And, uh, and I think about the mantle of California. I think about, you know, my goodness, wh- where would we be without Azusa? You know, that was just such a integral part of, of all of the churches that believe in the gifts of the spirit. So I'm thankful. I'm thankful, uh, Bishop, for, for God raising up pastors in California, because you're right. A lot of people have probably wrote off California, but what they don't realize is there's a revival breaking out there. I mean, I, I follow you. I watch your services. I see what God is doing, uh, there in your church. And, and there's other churches across California that are just experiencing revival. Um, Speaking of that, uh, Bishop, talk to me right now about where you feel that the church is. That's one of the things about the Big Picture Podcast that and YouTube channel that a lot of pastors, a lot of churches, members around the world that are hungry for authenticity, that are hungry for revival, they tune in here and they they comment and let me know, man, it's just so good to know that I'm not alone. So, you know, we come out of the pandemic, we come out of all this stuff. Where do you see the church going, not just in California, but globally, because you're connected globally what 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 does this remnant look like? What is what is happening now and in your spirit, man? Where do you see the next phase that we're moving in this remnant rising revival? You know, it's interesting you say that because I really believe our good friend uh, Pastor Miles Rutherford. Yes, a word and he said pastors are either going to they're either walk in revival or they're going to resign. Yep, that's and- it. I I believe there's such a shifting taking place since Mm. the pandemic. And I believe the, the remnant is definitely rising. And I think the days of seeker friendly churches are over. Wow. I think the days of just trying to get people in the pews are over. Mm -hmm. I think just to, 
I think we've we've traded in uh, anointing for convenience uh, uh, many years ago, and I think we traded in power for comfort. Wow. And I think people want the power of God back. They want mm. the anointing of God back. Yep. They don't care about convenience or comfort. And I'm telling you, I see such a shift. Mm. I think there's so many people that have been weeded out from even pastors and right. uh, people in the pew and the real the real remnant is rising that I, what I see initially happening, I see a great move of prayer. Mm. And I, I think getting back to prayer mm. and I, I think, I think prayer, uh, prayer moves mountains. There is power in prayer. Prayer touches eternity. Come on. Pastor. And, I, and I think we got, I think the first initial wave will be such a move of prayer mm. and that people will just fall on their face. Pastors, there'll be more people in prayer meetings than in regular services. Wow. And I, I'm believing that there's going to be such a move of prayer with people, even in the pews. Mm. And I, I believe God's going to light the pulpit on fire. Yeah. And then the pews are going to lit, lit on fire. Cause I think for so many years we had dead preachers preaching dead sermons to dead people. My God. And, and I believe God's going to light a fire and there's going to be some men of God, women of God that mm. are lit on fire for God and they're going to start preaching fire and the people are going to catch fire. But I'm telling you, it all starts with prayer before any great move of God, there has to be, there has to be a move of prayer first. So I think right now we're in that season of people really pushing into prayer. That is so good, Bishop. That's so good. And, and, you know, you talked about the preachers, the power of the preachers. I, I, I always go back to that scripture that says, you know, how can they believe in what they have not heard and how can they hear without a preacher? How can that preacher preach unless it be sent? And I think what's happening is in that prayer and in that gathering, and as the remnant, you know, as the very top, the very subject and very name remnant means, you know, cut away, left over, small. It's not big, but it's powerful. And uh, within it, what I'm seeing is as I travel and preach at times outside of my church that I pastor here lately, what I'm seeing is in the middle of everything. Uh, preachers are just being called. They're just, they're just. People are saying yes to the to preaching. Uh, three of three services that I had, uh, two services at other churches, and then one in my church. Within a five week period, there was 40, 41, 42 people for the first time ever came up on the platform in three services received the call to preach the gospel, and in three services just within a, less than five weeks. And and I'm talking about people that's some of them been going to church for years and just finally just saying, you know what, I'm saying yes, because God is raising up a rem within the remnant preachers of the gospel, unashamed. And I'm seeing I'm seeing young people, as you said, they're hunger in the young people. They they don't want the fake. They want the authentic. And then I'm seeing the I'm seeing the Caleb's. I'm seeing the the ones that are, you know, been serving all their lives, been praying for a move of God and in, and making making it happen for other people. But yet they're they're coming back and saying, well, what about my mountain? What about my mountain? So we, we've got an 85 year old man in our church that dances and runs all over the place in the church. And he's, he's on fire for God. He's laying hands on people. He's, he's just always crying and weeping saying, this is what I've been praying for pastor. This is what I've been believing God for all my life. He's 85 years old. And he's just, he's like a spring chicken because he's excited to see what God is doing. Oh man, that excites me. What happens out there in California? I can't wait to get out there and be with you, man. That's going to be exciting. Yeah, come out. You come out. I can't wait. I can't wait. I I've, I know many that's been out there and just talk about how God is God is moving. Well, you know, Pastor, I know that you have led networks and you have you pastor pastors, and that's one of the things that's my passion, my heart is uh is to pastor pastors, and and we have a lot of pastors that watch this and listen to the podcast and watch the video, and uh, so we've spoke to the remnant church. Uh, uh, Bishop, I, I think we need to speak to the pastors and, you know, sure. cause the ones that are left, you know, I, I, I told, uh, Bishop Paul Goodwin, the first time I met him, you know, there at Pastor Miles Rutherford's church, we just got to connecting and we could tell immediately we was a like spirit. And I just put my arm around him. I told him, I said, listen, man, I appreciate you. I, I look forward to getting to know you. I said, but I want to say this to you. If you're a pastor in this day and age and you're still pastoring, and you're still passionate about God, you're the real deal. You're really a pastor. And uh, so, you know, we've got some battle-weary people, battle-weary men and women that have that have gone through not just life and the general attack of a preacher, but all that we went through, how many churches have closed down, all of this. But they're still in the game. 
So I know that's your heart. Can you take a moment and speak into those pastors and leaders that are still in the fight? Yes, sir. I'll tell you what, I have a burden for pastors and preachers because, you know, we need uh, we need preachers. We need pastors. We need people yes. that will that will serve the body. And I, I, the big thing I'm telling pastors right now is, you know, just die to yourself. Mm. And that I, I, I really believe that that I think for so many so many years, so many pastors have tried to be popular. Say it. And I think days are over. I, I think if you wanna if you wanna be popular, preach happiness. If if you wanna if you want to be unpopular, preach holiness. Mm. And I think we'll preach in holiness again. And I'm telling pastors, don't don't try to please people. Don't try to, Say you know, it. the days of people pleasing are over. You get over. a word from God and you deliver that word, Say whether it. people like it or not. And mm. I think for years, like, you know, we've been talking about, there's been so many preachers that cared more about faction and they had no passion. Right. And they cared. They, they, there was more pathetic than prophetic. Mm. And it was more superficial than supernatural. And I'm telling you, I think we got to get back to the supernatural. Yes. I think we got to get the prophetic and i think we got i'm t- i tell preachers this all the time if you don't have passion preaching mm. stop preaching stop preaching come on if there's no passion from the pulpit get out what do you what what are we doing exactly. if there is if there's no fire burning on the inside what are, man, you doing? What are we doing exactly and and we need the fire of god and and i'm believing too that preachers and pastors are going to be God is going to trust us with a burden, trust us with vision, mm, mm. and trust us with these precious jewels. Mm. I got a burden for my city. I got a burden for yes. California. I got a burden for for Central and South America. And you know, I, I it keeps me up at night sometimes, crying out to God. Mm. I, 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 I it, it bothers me that people are going to hell. It, me, it disturbs me that people are going to hell. I, I don't. I, I'm not okay with that. Come on. I am not with that and we need more pastors not worried about what they're driving but people are going to hell Jesus. And we need to step up and fight the good fight of faith my god bishop you, what you just said is so profound that it burdens you it's not okay that people are dying and going to hell where is that passion if listen if you are not excited about preaching the gospel if you do not see the honor and the privilege it is to take the sacred pulpit of God and to be his mouthpiece with, listen, trying to be as nice as we possibly can, go find something else to do because this is the last days, baby. We ain't got time to play these games. Listen, we talked about Dr. Lester Summerall. We could talk about Oral Roberts. We could talk about Amy Simple McPherson. We could list names all day long, and then we could go back even further than that. And then you could go all back all the way back to the to even Paul and Peter and James. And all. But the reality is this, preachers, listen to this. In God's infinite omniscient wisdom, he knew we would be alive in this moment, and he trusted us. He did not trust those amazing names. Thank God for them, but we're the ones here. And, and I tell you what, I love reading about them. I love studying about them, but you know what? They ain't here, but we are. We are, and God trusted us. We truly, it ain't a cliche, preachers. We've come to the kingdom for such a time as this. God chose us, Bishop. He chose us. He trusted us. And what are we going to do with that trust? And it breaks my heart to see some of these pastors, after all that we went through, trying to go back and be the same thing they were before. And it ain't going to work. It ain't going to work. And, and I'm going to tell you, you know what the new normal is, y'all? Y'all, y'all hear me talking about it on the show all the time. The new normal is is really nothing new. It's a return to the discarded phase of the past. It's a return to holiness. It's a return to preaching. It's a return to laying hands on people. It's a return to casting out devils. I tell you what, if, if you don't believe in casting out devils, what Bible are you preaching, Bishop? Am I preaching good right now? You're preaching. I mean, do we still cast out devils? Do we still lay hands on the sick? What? What? Come on, talk to me. Well, I'll tell you what, you know, for many years, the church – uh, you know, was a lifeboat for the hurting. We were a lifeboat rescuing the hurting and dying. Mm. And for a season, we became a cruise ship uh, recruiting and promising. And we need to go back to being that lifeboat rescuing the hurting and dying of this world. And I'm here to tell you, we got to get back to preaching this gospel, miracles, signs and wonders, follow the preaching of the gospel. And I'm here to tell you, this world 
is dying and hurting and more confused. And, and think about this, Bishop. I, I, I preached this a little bit on Sunday. There, there are six billion Bibles that are in print all over the world. 20 million Bibles are sold every year in the U.S. Wow. And so the word, we have the word at our fingertips. There's great stuff on YouTube like this. There's so much stuff out there. But we live in a completely biblically illiterate society that is so where true. people don't know the Bible. And we're selling 20 million Bibles a year just in the U.S. And what we need is a revival. What we need is the fire of God. Mm. Jesus came, he said, he said, Jesus said, I came to send fire on the earth. My God. And we need a fire that stirs people up that they want to open their Bibles, get into the word, get, get refreshed by the word. The fire of God needs to stir in the preachers first yeah. to get people back to prayer, back to the word. Because I'm telling you, if we keep going the way we're going, a generation I, I, a generation will be lost, but thank God there's churches like your church, other churches all over this country that are saying, not on our watch. Come on. We're, we're going to preach this gospel. We're not losing a generation. We're going to keep preaching it. We're going to lay, you know, every once a month we have a service. We bring all of our kids church in and we pray for them. We mm. prophetically declare things over them. They, they get slain in the spirit. God begins to move True. in their life. We want our, even our youth, our kids, our kids' church to experience a powerful move of God. And they have that at kids' church, but we want them to be there to hear my voice, to hear my wife's voice, yeah, and to experience yeah. that. that P Pentecost, the supernatural, the fire of God shouldn't be something when they come to church when they're 13, 14, 15. Mm -hmm. They're like, what is this? They should be experiencing it the day they come to church. And we need to raise up a generation in the fire of God. I am passionate Ooh. about it. I can see it. And listen, I want everybody to hear this. This ain't this ain't no uh, su Southern preacher here, y'all. This this guy pastors in California. OK, but here's the thing. What they don't know, Bishop, is you weren't always raised in this. You you the passion that is driving you is not based on the fact that you're a preacher's kid and all that kind of stuff. And I think before we go any further to wind this broadcast down as 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 we have just fired up people and and inspired people. It's people need to know where Brian Bolt came from. And I feel like you need to just share the testimony and I don't know all of it. I know some of it about how you came to Christ and why is it that you're so passionate about seeing people set free because what God did for you. Tell us how you had your experience with God and came to God. Yes, sir. You know, I, I was born in Maryland and at a young age, you know, my, uh, I got into drugs and alcohol and, you know, I had great parents, but I, I ended up just going down a dark road and then, you know, led me down places that were just horrible and I could never get over the drugs. I could never get over the alcohol and years like that. And I would try to do the right thing. And before I knew it, the drugs and the alcohol would bring me back down. And it was, I was in a pit of despair. And one day a drug deal went wrong. And before I knew it, uh, a guy pulled out a gun. Mm -hmm. He put the gun to my head, the gun went off and I watched my own blood come out of my head, like a water fountain. Wow. And my very first thought was I was so happy I was going to die because I had nothing. And eventually, as I'm going in and out of consciousness, the ambulance came. The paramedics put me in the back of the ambulance. And on the way to the hospital, one of the paramedic workers said to me, said, son, I really am not supposed to do this. But I need to ask you a question. And he said, I don't know if you're going to make it to the hospital alive. But he said, before you die, he said, do you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Wow. And I didn't, I heard about Jesus my whole life, but I didn't know him that way. And something tugged at my heart and I asked Jesus into my heart. I, I woke up several days later in the hospital. They said, I would never walk, never talk. I'd be a vegetable for the rest of my life. And for 75 days, I did not speak, eat or swallow. But I look back now, the same Jesus that saved me began to heal my body mm -hmm. and one miracle after another. And God just did such a miracle in my life. And I had no permanent damage. And next thing you know, I knew God did something. It was like a fire was shut up in my bones. My God. And I wanted to tell everyone about Jesus. I got connected to ministry out here in California at that time. And uh, I just would go around telling everyone about Jesus. 
I mean, I, Jesus could change them. Jesus could move, move in their life. Doesn't matter what they've done. And at that point, I, I knew there was a call of God. And really what stirred my heart is God, God spoke several words through people into my life. And in, in my goal in life was I wanted to make, I wanted to be one of the most wanted men mm. in hell. Woo. And I want to be known in hell where demons say, get away from that, that man. Because he's in town, people are going to get saved, cities are going to shake, and, and my goal in life is to be part, be known in hell and to be one of the most wanted men in hell. <laughs> and, uh, I will go right up to the gates of hell, we'll go anywhere. We've done crusades now in gang-infested areas in El Salvador. Wow. You know, our, at times my life was in danger, they would say, but greater is he that lives in me than he that's in the world. And I take this serious because it Jesus completely changed my life. And well, I, you, how, I, can, how can you be scared of anything when, when you, you got, you've been shot in the face, you were shot in the face and left for dead brother. I mean, and, and came out. I mean, what, what about, what about that? Was it a lady or a man in the hospital? I can't remember what you said. Was it a lady it was in the back of the ambulance, actually the paramedic worker, the back of the ambulance. What if that guy would not have obeyed God? Think about this. You, the, we, we may, you, I don't know if you kept up with this guy, if you ever saw him again, ever in your life again. But the reality is this, a paramedic. See, you might not have a pulpit. You might not have a microphone. But you might you might work in an ambulance. You might you might work you might work in a Walmart somewhere, whatever. But a man who got up that day. Just going to work, knowing he's going to see horrible things, he's going to have to deal with, with blood, he's going to have to deal with all this stuff. He looks down at a man who has is, is got drugs in his body, drug dealer, all this kind of stuff, life, really hoping that he would die and thinking he's just going to go ahead and finally end the pain. And what if that guy would not have opened his mouth and led you to the Lord? Here we are today, Bishop. Lives have been changed all over the world because one man obeyed God and made sure that there was an eternity was not going to go to hell. He didn't know if he was going to make it or not. He wanted to make sure that he, when he laid his hip head, head on the pillow that night, that he obeyed God. And here you are all these years later, Bishop, pastoring, pastoring pastors, leading networks, leading pastors all over the world and all over the country, missions, because one man obeyed God. You know, and when you hear that, that we quoted earlier about, you know, how will they know unless a preacher tells them that that ambulance driver whether he thought of himself as a preacher or not he was a preacher and he told that you back, that back of the ambulance became a church that night my god and, you know that pulpit was the back of that ambulance and i answered that altar call mm. and you know everybody wants a microphone everybody wants a spotlight but there's so much work to be done for the kingdom of god mm. and you, know, you got to find your pulpit wherever it's at mm. and that it was the back of that ambulance, and he preached that. You know, it wasn't complicated, mm -mm. but the gospel was complicated. Pastor, you know? will, you, will you, while we're flowing in this, I believe there's some people going to be watching this, that their heart is just being tugged right now. Can you, as we get ready to go off this program, you just stretch your hands towards that camera and pray over them, speak over them right now. Just let the Lord lead you. Jesus, we thank you for who you are. We thank you that you're a way maker, a miracle worker, a promise keeper. I speak to lives right now, wherever they're at, God. And I say, Lord, that you begin to call people into the work of the ministry. Mm. But also, God, I pray that you light people on fire, yes. that they just got to tell people, yes. no matter if they're at Walmart, if they're at Denny's, mm. if they're in the back of an ambulance, God, they just got to let people know that Jesus is alive, that Jesus saves, that Jesus sets free because the sun sets free is free indeed, God. I pray that you just stir up this remnant to be, Lord, yes. men and women that will proclaim the goodness of God in the land of the living, God. Yes. And I just declare, Lord, that you just raise up some men and women that will be known in hell mm. that will make the most wanted list in hell i pray that you stir such a fire up in them right now god mm. that they will just begin to flow in uh, your way greater than they ever have before lord we thank you for what you're doing lord bless bishop in this podcast god we pray that it reaches thousands upon thousands you, upon thousands of pastors and thank leaders you, thank and you. stirs them up for the mm. work of god 
My God. Woo. My God. If listen, if God touched you, listen, is we want to rejoice with you. Comment down below and let us know that maybe you gave your life to Christ. Maybe you rededicated your life. Maybe you felt the power of God come over and you and give you hope. Maybe you're a minister that have just lost hope, but you through this broadcast, you've received hope. You've received inspiration and you've decided I'm not letting nothing stop me. I'm going to preach the gospel. Maybe you just, you think, well, I'm nothing. I just, I'm working retail. I, but you heard that story about that ambulance paramedic, how God used a man to change a life and now raised up a pastor's pastor all over the world. That could be you. Oh my goodness. Bishop, what a program. What a program. I thank you so much for being on here from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. Love you. Thank you so much. It was an honor. Amen. Well, we appreciate you and we appreciate everybody. If you hadn't already hit that subscribe button, please do so as you as as you go off today, as you get ready to sign up. Before you do it, hit that subscribe button and give us a thumbs up and comment. Let us know if this broadcast was a blessing to you. I know it has been a blessing to us. If you want to know more about Bishop's uh, ministry, you can go to cr.city. Uh, what a cool website, y'all. This is City Reach right there in California. You can learn more about the ministry, learn more about Bishop Brian Bolt and his wonderful wife, co-pastors that church. You can watch their services. You can connect with them and do all the, th the things that that website enables you to do. Well, I'll tell you what, this has been a blessing. This has been an awesome big picture uh, broadcast. Share this broadcast. Invite someone to listen to it. If you listen to it on the podcast instead of the YouTube channel, make sure you give us a good review. That'll be a blessing. Next time, we're going to bring it back again, just like we do. We don't ever play when we get on this one, man. We come serious because we are not woke but we are certainly awake, and we're helping you see the big picture. See you next time. God bless.